Final Cut Pro on iPad is insane. You can do this so fast. Let's jump right in. So when you open Final Cut Pro for the first time, we have this blank projects window over here. So this is the area where you can manage all your projects. So we can simply click on this button over here called new project and click on new project again. And now let's add a project name. For example, I'm going to naming this as tutorial and you can leave the format as automatic Else, you can set custom settings as well. So for the resolution, I'm going to select 4K. If you're working with 1080p, you can keep that as well. Orientation is landscape for a YouTube video and portrait for instagram reels and shorts then we have color space so unless you're working with hdr content you can simply keep it as rec 709 which is the ideal one so based on the video that you shot you can select the frame rate as well so my one was shot in 30 fps which is like 29.97 fps to be precise so i'm gonna keep that else if you shot on your iphone on 60 fps you can keep that as well now let us select the storage location so you can click on final cut pro for ipad else you can choose your custom location so for example i'm gonna select my ssd that is connected to my ipad so let me click on that so once that is done you can simply click on continue and it will give you options to choose from like you can record straight up from the camera of your ipad record with live multi-cam with your iphone and stuff like that else you can simply import from your photos or your files as well so i'll be selecting files as i'll be importing content from my external ssd that is connected and not to worry this is a beginner's guide so i'll take you step by step so let me just quickly import an a roll of mine a roll as in the talking shot so let me import one from my past video and finally we are inside the final cut pro timeline and this is where the magic happens but before we discuss all those i need to tell you something so if you have the apple pencil we can do live drawings and animate stuff directly inside this app just like the one we used at the intro so we'll be talking about that and also i really recommend that you get a keyboard folio case or at least connect an external keyboard I'll be leaving all the links in the description box below the like button. Also, while you're down there, I'm currently working on a custom wallpaper pack just like the one I'm currently using. So if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know as well and I'll create a wallpaper pack for you. So alright, so let me just import this video. I can simply drag the video over here that we have in the project media and drag and drop it to the timeline. It is that easy. So this is a previous video of mine where I was comparing two tablets. So the first step of editing was to import your footage, which we have already done. And now we need to trim the video to select the parts that we need and we can simply discard the rest. But before that, as I can see, the camera audio of mine is really low. So I can just increase the volume real quick. So simply click on the video that you have. And at the bottom, you can see this option called volume. Click on that. And now you can see a volume slider at the left. So I'm going to increase it. So you can increase or decrease the sound depending on your footage that you have. All right. Now the sound is louder and it's easier to work with. And I forgot to introduce myself. I am Prithviraj, by the way. So let's talk about cutting the clips. So the biggest advantage of Final Cut Pro is that we have this huge jog dial over here. So simply click on that compass icon that we have over here and it will open up this huge jog dial that you can use. It will feel very similar to the camera zoom dial you have on your iPhone. So yeah. So as you can see when I'm rotating it, it's like going frame by frame to the exact point I want to cut the video. So for example, just about here sounds right. So once you have navigated to the place where you want to cut the video, you can simply click on the scissor icon that we have at the bottom and it will make a cut for you. and we can delete the rest of the footage that we had in the start if you're using a keyboard you can simply press delete on your keyboard else you can even click on that trash can icon that we have so let me just quickly trim the video and select the parts that i need and this jog dial can be really helpful for that aspect now once we have made all the cuts let us try to import some b-rolls as well to import more footage into your timeline there will be this import button here on top you can click on that and from there we can select from photos and files again i'll go to files and let me select this b-roll of my apple watch so i can click on open and as you can see it has imported that into my project media bin over here similarly i'm importing a few more random b-rolls that i have to show you guys so now that is imported i can simply click on this b-roll over here and this thing will come up and from here we can select the part that we want of the b-roll for example i want this segment where i'm opening the menu of my apple watch or the home screen whatever that is so let me make a selection over there by using the two brackets that are there so what we basically did over here suppose this is your entire video and we only selected this chunk of the video and now you can simply click on it and drag and drop it to the timeline it was that easy it also imported the audio of the b-roll and you can simply click on the volume button and set it to zero and it won't bother us simple as that now let's take a look and how we can adjust our footage for example i want to zoom inside a clip or maybe zoom out rotate crop or anything else so that part is very simple as well so at the bottom you can see this option called inspect so simply click on that and you can see this left hand bar pop up and from there we have many controls so once we go to the second page we can now edit the transform controls for example i can zoom in and zoom out inside my b-roll that i have you can simply 
use the icons over here else you can set it manually from the numbers over there and you can also rotate your b-rolls so suppose the camera was tilted you can fix that here and we have other options as well like crop and stuff you can explore all those so far we have taken a look at how we can cut the footage resize and rotate them now let's take a look at something advanced like how we can speed up or slow motion any footage that we have it's basically changing the speed of the clip that we have so let me import another b-roll to showcase this one so i have this b-roll of mine where i'm actually editing on lightroom mobile so now when i click on inspect in the first page you will see this option called format under which there will be this option called clip speed so when we click on that there will be this timeline kind of view so if we increase the speed the footage will become short as in it will become fast forward and if we decrease that it will become longer as in in slow motion so let me show you i have changed it to fast to 168 percent and as you can see everything happened really fast and that's not something we want in this case so let me just take it to the left side this time and set it to around 88 to 90 percent to get a little bit of slow motion feel so now as you can see the clip has kind of slowed down a bit so if you want to work with slow motion clips i recommend that you at least shoot at 60 fps that way you'll have more room to work with so we have adjusted the videos as well now let us take a look on how you can import audio and music inside your project so firstly i need to show you this there are a few soundtracks that are available on final cut by default so on the top right corner you can see this option called fx so let's click on that and from there let us select soundtracks and as you can see there are many song files that we can use and import in our projects but if you want you can import your own music as well which i highly recommend so the process of importing music is the same as importing videos simply click on that video icon and let me find any background music that i have so i can click on it and click on open once again and as you see it has imported that and again the steps are same i can select the part of the song that i want and then simply drag it and drop it into the timeline simple as that so now we have imported the background music as well and first things first we need to decrease the volume of it you don't want it to be buzzing in your ears so like always we have done this a few times now go to the volume icon over there and this time we're going to reduce the audio suppose minus 20 to 24 db should be fine that much should be enough and as you can see the graph also changes on whether you increase or decrease the volume so that can help you get a visual representation as well so once that is done i need to crop the remaining part and in the cut segment as you can see there are two more tools that we have the extreme right one will crop off everything that is there in the right side and the left one will crop off everything on the left side simple as that so for this case i'm gonna click on this icon so everything on the right is removed simple as that this one helped us to not make a pit stop in the thrash can icon once again so it got removed by itself same as audio you can also import your photos as well photos logos whatever you want so import and let's select a photo this time and that's it we have imported a photo and drag and drop into your timeline same as that and speaking of logos let us take a look at how you can add text into your videos so let's click on that fx button once again and from there you'll find this option called titles click on that from there you can select any kind of text that you want i'm just gonna import something basic like this essential title that we have we can use this as a lower third kind of thing so simply import that onto your timeline and now once we click on that and hit on inspect we will have this text box over here now we can rename the text from here so for example let me rename it to pr75k my channel name so once that is done you can change the color as well well, I like to go for something that is grayish kind of thing. So let me choose that color from here and we are done. And as of now, it's straight in front of me. We don't want that. We want it in some corner like this one. So what you can do is go to the second option that we have and all those icons will pop up in the window again. So we can simply resize the text and place it where we need. That simple. Also, please consider hitting that subscribe button if you're finding this video helpful as I keep creating videos on the iPad that you might like to see in the future as well. So now let's spice up our video by using transitions because these can really help you hook your viewers. And now to import transitions as well, we again have to go to FX and this time let's select transitions. And from there, as you can see, there are a lot of options that you can choose from. So let me just quickly select one. For example, let us try this side by side split. So I have two consecutive B-rolls of my iPad. I can spice things up by adding this. So simply drag it and drop it in the middle of the two clips that we have. And that is done. Now, once we play it, as you can see, it is kind of creating this split screen view of both the iPad videos. And then it's switching to the second clip that we have. Small things, but can help you spice up your videos. For example, let us add this push transition just to see how it looks so you can simply explore all the transitions that we have as they can really help you spice things up just don't use them too frequently else it can become annoying so those were pretty much the basics of the video now let's take a tiny dive into something advanced and that is color adjustments like color grading and color correction everything of that and that is kind of an entire world by itself so i recommend that you check out some basics to color grading video as that will help you in order to understand how everything works but for this one we'll be taking a look at basic stuff so if you have ever edited videos on apps like Lightroom or maybe Snapseed. So this one is going to feel a bit similar to that. So let us start by coloring this iPad video of mine of me using Lightroom. Simply select the clip again and click on inspect. And this time let's go to the last option called FX. So once we are there, you can see this plus icon that we have. Click on that. And from there, we can select this option called color adjustments. And now we have all 
the controls we need like we can adjust the exposure contrast shadows and stuff so let us do some basic color grading here for example i'm gonna increase the exposure a bit to make it a little bit brighter and also i like that contrasty look so i'm gonna increase the contrast as well similarly you can play around with all the lighting settings that we have brightness highlights shadows and also increase the saturation a bit don't increase it too much else it will look unnatural just a tiny bit should work fine and there we have it we have done basic color correction onto the footage that we have similarly let's try on the apple watch video over here so let's go to inspect again last page and from there let's go to color adjustments and again do the same increasing the exposure contrast and stuff like that and this time let's adjust the color temperature as well as of now you can see the apple watch footage is kind of very bluish so we can make this a little more warm so from mid-tones warm i'm just gonna adjust the temperature a bit and it looks much better as you can see but just by doing that and we can also set the tint to a bit greenish so that it gives that premium kind of feel so let's do that and lastly let's try to color create the roll as well the video of me talking so once again open the color adjustment window and let me increase the exposure and the contrast and also increase the saturation a bit a little too much maybe but yeah it's fine you get the idea so as of now we have done all the basic framework that is required for any video but since we're on the ipad and have access to apple pencil let's make the most out of it so apple has this feature called live drawing that we're gonna take a look into now you can simply click on that apple pencil nib button on top and it will give you this window and now you can simply draw whatever you want so i'm just gonna create random that thing stars that we have so yeah and maybe a smiley photo whatever you want it looks very simple right but as you can see it has created a new layer called live drawing now this is what happens when we play it it actually animated your entire strokes so that it is looking like i am drawing these stars in real time this thing is a game changer to be very honest as i don't remember any other video editing software that natively helps you do this so yeah big props to apple for that now we can adjust the duration of that the smiley face is not looking that great so we're gonna remove that part but anyways once you have everything finalized now we have to export the video in order to upload it anywhere we want so there are two ways firstly you can open the menu bar that we have thanks to ipadOS 26 and from there go to file and export to in order to export our video else you can simply click on your project name and click on share and from there you can choose to select video audio only or maybe the project file in case you wanted to continue editing your project on your macbook or something like that so let's click on video under export and you'll see a lot of options to choose from so firstly we need to include both video and audio that's fine and you can even select various presets like high quality smaller file size and social platforms so if you want to upload on youtube and stuff social platforms would just work out fine but in case you want to do manually as well i'll show you how so under video codec we need to select h264 or 265 as well works but h264 is the one you should probably use because for social media platforms that is the most used to one and from resolution i'm gonna select 4k once again and file type it's up to you you can select mp4 or mov as well i'm gonna select mov and color space rec 709 as we previously discussed and now once that is done you can simply click on this button called export and it will be done that will be pretty much it and the export time will actually depend on which ipad you're using i'm using the ipad here m2 so in case you have the new ipad pro m5 it's gonna be a lot faster than this one so that's pretty much it the basics of final cut pro on the ipad if you personally ask me which video editor i use i don't use final cut pro rather i use davinci resolve because the color controls in that software is simply insane and guess what i even did a beginner's guide on davinci on the ipad so in case you're interested in that you can click here on this video else if you would like to know what my favorite ipad apps are because i keep testing out thousands of apps then click here for that and i'll see you on either sides